I thought I'd go jazz today and I don't look at much jazz on this channel and to be honest I feel a bit of a fraud putting myself forward as a jazz guitar player and a jazz teacher just because compared with some jazz musicians that I know I'm not all that great but I do really enjoy listening to some jazz and I enjoy working on jazz I think it's really good for my own playing it just helps me push myself as a guitar player and today I wanted to look at a real jazz classic from Kenny Burrell and if you're already a jazz guitar player chances are you know this one it's a really famous tune it's a great one to have in your repertoire but if you're thinking about getting into jazz if you're jazz curious I think this could be a really good place to start just because it's a super cool tune but it's unintimidating as well I think there's this maybe misconception with jazz that it has to be very complicated and before you can start playing jazz you have to know all of this crazy stuff and the modes of the melodic minor scale and diminished this and that but that's not true at all you can play jazz if you know your minor pentatonic scale you can play this tune and you can make some great music with it and as we'll see with this piece of music it's about melody and groove and rhythm and about simple ideas being played really well so I'm going to begin by playing a bit of this tune for you I'm going to play the head the melody at the start of the tune and I'm going to play the first solo as close as I can get it to how it sounds on the recording then I'll improvise a little bit of my own and then I'll play the head again and then we'll discuss all of this stuff <laughs> To look up what chitlins were and sure enough it's an awful based food stuff I won't go into the details right now but it doesn't sound particularly appetizing to me and uh, chitlins con carne it's the opening track on this record midnight blue um, I'm not sure when it was recorded in the, the 60s sometime and it's a real jazz guitar classic it's an essential record to, to listen to I think so do check that one out if you don't know it now in this video I want to talk about how to play the head or the main theme and then I'm going to break down Kenny's first solo in a little bit of detail. Then beyond that, I want to talk about how you might start improvising some ideas of your own. And I think this song is a really good platform for getting into improvisation and in particular for doing that kind of question and answer thing with yourself, as I just tried to demonstrate. You play a lick and then you accompany yourself with some chords in the gaps between the licks. It's a really good skill to get the hang of. It sounds great, particularly if you're playing on your own. So let's get into some of that stuff. Let's begin by talking about the head and it's a blues in C and it's got kind of a Latin feel to it so straight eighth notes more or less it's, uh, I don't know if it's exactly a bossa nova but it's, it's certainly a Latin kind of groove that we've got on this one and in terms of the chords we're using here it's just one four five so essentially C7, F7, G7 no fancy jazz blues chord changes and substitutions and all of that malarkey here just a straightforward one four five blues and let's begin with the opening phrase which goes like this we've got 
So all of the melodic stuff in this tune, both in the head and in the solos, is mostly played using the C minor pentatonic or C blues scale. He might occasionally sneak some other notes in there, but for the most part he's just sticking with that and mostly just played out of this shape here. So pattern one C minor pentatonic, that shape that we all know and love. But just this opening phrase, we're going a bit lower down the neck to the sixth position and I'm playing it like this. And as far as I know, there's no video footage of Kenny Burrell playing this tune, but it just feels right to play it here. So we're starting on the root note, but I'm playing it with my third finger and then sliding up to this G note here and then back down again. And you could play all of this straight out of box one minor pentatonic, but it just doesn't seem to feel quite as good there. It doesn't flow. You don't get that nice slide in there either. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that Kenny's going to be playing it down here. And rhythmically, this phrase is a pickup phrase. So it's starting before the downbeat, beat one of the 12 bar blues proper. We've got two, three, four, one. That kind of rhythm. And one of the great things about this piece is Kenny's phrasing and his rhythm. And it's very, very hard to emulate this or to describe it. And Yes, it's got that kind of straight eighth Latin feel, but there's a little bit of swing to some of his phrases as well. So all I can do is suggest you listen very closely to the original recording, maybe try and play along and just soak up a bit of that amazing feel that he's got. So we've got our opening phrase and the pattern that Kenny sets up is we've got a lick or a phrase and then we've got some chordal accompaniment stuff in between the phrases. So... <laughs> first chord is this. This is the one chord of our blues in C. So C7, but I think the precise voicing that Burrell is using is this one. So it's kind of a C7 sharp 9 and you'll probably know this from the, the Hendrix chord, usually played in this voicing. Um, this is the same chord that we're just playing on a lower string set. So we've just got frets 8, 7, eight and eight and if you listen very closely to the recording sometimes he's got some higher notes in there as well so occasionally I think you've got a big sixth note voicing here so eighth fret across the top four strings but sometimes I'm just hearing a couple of notes sometimes it's just just that uh, that B flat and E flat in there so listen closely to that. You don't need to be too precise with this, but it's mostly the lower strings there. If you want to get that high note in there, you have to just try and flatten down your, your third finger. You, you could possibly play this with the thumb wrapped around the top. I, I say there's no video footage. So I'm not sure how uh, Burrell would do this, but that would work. Or you can just stick with the lower strings. Now, so far we've got this. And then we've got another pentatonic phrase. And some more chords. Um, then we're heading to the four chord. That's the same as the opening phrase, but now we've got the four chord. And I think the best way to play this is probably to play F9 chord. So starting on the fifth string, we've got frets eight, seven, and then eight, eight, and eight. Again, you're not always hearing all of those notes. Sometimes it's just this little tritone, and I'm not always hearing the root note in there either. He might sometimes be leaving that, that low C in there. So it's an, an F9 with the C, C in the bass. But let's go with this F9 shape. to the one chord, same phrase, and then heading to the five chord, so sliding up G and B flat, and then this blue scale phrase, so just sliding up to the ninth fret on the A string, and then down to the eighth. To 
wrap things up. So fairly simple, but the rhythm and the phrasing is the thing. That's the thing to really strive for when you're learning this piece. Let me just try and put all of that together for you. Two, three, four, one. break down Kenny's first solo then and I think the real lesson here is just how much mileage you can get out of very simple materials if your phrasing and touch and timing is as good as someone like Kenny Burrell so uh, it starts like this we're coming out of the head <laughs> that's our opening phrase nice and simple got some chordal comping in between the phrases then we've got this so just coming straight down the minor pentatonic scale here in a kind of triplet rhythm and then the next phrase and I like this one this is perhaps a little bit of an unexpected rhythm we've got kind of a sixteenth note and then a dotted eighth note. Two, three, four, one. And then we're comping with the F9 chord. And another C minor pentatonic phrase. This time we're sliding up out of position one into position two. So we've got a G and then a B flat and then sliding down on the third string and landing on the root note back to the one and one thing that might be worth pointing out is even though he's just using the C minor pentatonic scale he's still landing on the good notes you still got to find the good notes and the chord tones so this might seem like a very different approach to what I was talking about last week where I was talking about improvising using triads and chord tones but all of that stuff still applies here even if we're just using the C minor pentatonic scale you want to land on the good notes which are usually going to be the chord tones so he's emphasizing that C note quite a lot which is the the root of the one chord but it's the it's the fifth of the four chord and in other places in his improvisation he's also going to be emphasizing notes which are in the chord that he's playing over at any given moment so we've just had this got this phrase uh, I love this phrase We're just sliding into a C and then a G and then a high C and then we've got this kind of F sharp to F move which is again hitting chord tones we're hitting the flat seven of the five chord and just some comping there we just got the five going down to the four chord you could just get away with just the tritones there and then the final phrase is more blues scale stuff in a triplet rhythm that's the first solo and well worth learning this one note for note I think you get a lot out of studying this solo in terms of learning about rhythm and phrasing so let me try and put it together for you slowly you've got two three four one continue by talking about how you might improvise some ideas of your own using this format that Kenny Burrell sets up in this tune where you've got a lick 
and then some comping so you're kind of accompanying yourself with some rhythm guitar stuff around the lead guitar phrases uh, it's such a nice thing to be able to do and it may well be that some of you find this stuff comes very naturally and you don't need to think too much about it in, in which case good luck for you that's fantastic but um, speaking personally it took me a while to get this kind of thing together and I had to work on it and count things out quite carefully uh, then of course it becomes natural and it becomes second nature so if you do want to start getting into this then I suggest just treating it as a kind of exercise and I'll kind of guide you through the, the steps that I would recommend now and the way I think about it is you've got your comping rhythm your chord part and let's keep that in a fixed rhythm for now I realize that once you get more advanced you can be a bit looser with this the comping rhythm doesn't have to be exactly the same the length of the phrases doesn't have to be exactly the same but let's keep that fixed for now and let's just do it on one chord so we're going to hold down that C7 sharp 9 and let's just get this rhythm happening so two three four one two three four one two three four one so the rhythm we've got there coming in on the two it's one two three and four and one two three four one and the way I think about this is you've got a little gap or a window in which to play your lead guitar phrase and you've got four or so beats you're going to be coming in on beat two because the chord part stops on beat one then you've got two three four one that's your little window and then you're back to your comping part so you've got two three four one da do da ba ba bo ba da 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 ba 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 that's your little gap in which to play a phrase and I suggest you start really simple we're just going to play some very simple C minor pentatonic phrases in that little window and just keeping the rhythm very simple so it could just be two three four one two and three and four and one be the starting point don't try to do anything fancy at this stage just make sure you've got the rhythm that's really steady you've got that steady pulse you've got the chords in the right place then you've got your little window in which to improvise a phrase and once you're cool with that you can try taking it round the 12 bar blues and to begin with just keep things very simple keep that rhythm part exactly the same each time keep your phrases more or less the same and just see if you can get through the 12 bar blues maintaining that Groove. So that, that would sound something like this, two, three, four, one. just focusing on keeping things nice and simple but maintaining that groove all the way through so make sure you can do that and keep things so then of course you can start to develop things a little bit more you can adjust the rhythm of the phrases maybe introduce a bit more syncopation some triplets and then things will start coming to life even more <laughs> So 
So give that a try. It's such a good exercise, this one. And of course, it doesn't just apply to this tune or even just to jazz. You can use this skill in just about any situation where you might want to just throw in some chords in and around your lead guitar stuff. Let me go through the gear that I'm using today. And I was quite gratified to read in the comments last week that there are quite a few of you who do watch the videos up to this point after 20 minutes or so of me droning on. There are still some of you hanging on in there, which is good. Now, the guitar I'm using today is my Jazz Master, and um, despite the name, it's not that widely used for playing jazz. I was struggling to think of many actual jazz guitar players who use a Jazz Master. Um, I can't really think of any. Um, maybe Nels Klein, I guess, occasionally uses a Jazz Master to play jazz. Can't really think of anybody else. Let me know if you can think of any other jazz players who use Jazz Masters. I would, of course, one day like to get a proper jazz guitar, like an old Gibson archtop or something. Can't quite justify that at the moment, but it might well happen. But to be honest, you can play jazz on just about anything. I'm not a purist about this. And for me, the Jazz Master works. It's more about your touch on the instrument and the way you set the guitar and amp. And today I'm using the neck pickup. I've got the tone control rolled off just a little bit. The amp I'm using is my little Fender Super Champ and no pedals whatsoever today. There we are. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like more jazz, as I said, there's not that much on my channel, but I have done a few things. So if you do a search on my website or on my channel, you should be able to find some other lessons. I think I've done some Charlie Christian stuff and various licks and things. So check that out if you're interested. And if you would like to see me do more jazz, then let me know and I can try and do some more of this kind of thing before too long. Tab is going to be up on my Patreon page. I've tabbed out the head and the first couple of Kenny's solos. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. See you next time.